Okay, we're going to get started now. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Stephen Wilson. I'm basically the founder and driver behind Craig Scoops Victoria. Um, we're just going to start off with an uh, acknowledgement of hot country. Holly Hicks is going to do that for us. Um, no idea now yet. Hello, my name is Holly, and I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land, past, present, and emerging, and I would like to acknowledge any elder in this room. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'll just introduce you to the team. So I'm the steward coordinator, so overseeing the whole organisation. We have Martin Jackson, who's the board chair. Uh, Leanne Lindorf, secretary. Steve Toll, who's our regional steward in the Grampians, one of the areas. Um, Goshen Watts, another regional steward in the Grampians. So they make up the board at the moment. So. Um, I'd just like to also thank the sides for board, uh, a few other people, uh, Ashley Henley, she did a lot in the early stages for us, she was one of the main drivers behind the proposal for PB. And there was um, Mike Rocker, he helped us for a fair bit and they helped with our constitution, and then also Kevin Lindorf, who has actually kept me going for quite a long time in the early days while I was setting up. Without the support of these people, we wouldn't be where we are today. Uh, the aims of this stewardship program, it's a... Uh, Recognising environmental and cultural values at climbing sites and the impact that climbing and access may have on those values. Recommending and supporting works to protect and maintain and improve climbing sites. Actively supporting an understanding and respect of, for traditional and cultural heritage and reconciliation. Educating the climbing community and minimising climbing impacts and keeping them informed in conditions of crags. So, all four are rather important to us. It's um, so we may have a particular order, but you have to put them in an order. Um, the actual environmental and cultural values at climbing is quite an interesting one where it comes to impact, and we will be recording as much as we can as cultural, as well as all the just general impacts on the sites that climbers are making. Uh, cultural ones we don't necessarily know, they're not making public, so we'll hopefully get a bit further and work with those ones. Uh, recommending and supporting works to protect. So basically that's, we will, with all our risk assessments, we do reports and we send them to PV and re recommend works. It's up to PV if they're going to support them. We can't actually just go in the parks and do as we please. Um, so actively supporting and understanding respect for traditional cultural heritage. So we'll get that down to that even a bit more later on in the, the um, slides to show where we are and educating the community. Now one of the biggest parts of this is most of us are here as seasoned climbers, we understand the, um, just the general etiquette of climbing. We are actually going to really be aiming more in the gyms in Melbourne before we're getting out, we'll be educating in the gyms there. So we'll be, uh, part of that we'll be using Cliff Cares already um, Access is No Accident campaign if it exists, but we don't want to create something new, no need to do it. So, but yeah, so we'll be having um, a lot of Melbourne-based stewards who primarily work in the gyms, educating clients. Um, so with basic planning, all the planning's been going on for quite a long time, establishing our foundations, all well, that got really got solid last year, a lot to do with COVID, you know, we were locked down doing stuff. And now we're into action, so part of this rollout is getting the community involved. Um, stewardship programs only work with communities involved. You can't really just go and expect people from the other side of the state to be a steward in a local area. We are ideally supporting stewardship programs if, if they exist and helping them out. There's one at Mount Macedon already in, in, just out of Melbourne where there's a steward group there, local group, and we're just backing them and they're working away and it's um, sort of going okay, but we've got some hindrances about Macedon now, so we'll get to that a bit later. So if we move to the next, oh, so the governance, so we'll just go, you can read the ones on the sides if you're right, but basically we have the board, the board is actually there to support the steward coordinator, do all the actions, but are um, also directing the organisation as well. Um, steward coordinators basically are overseeing all the regional stewards and, um, so basically, regional stewards, there's going to be nine or ten of them now, I think. Um, and basically, they will have 
uh, area stewards under there. Area stewards are primarily for the ground heaps because it's such a big area. And then we have um, crag stewards. So, but crag stewards are crags. Um, boundary Road News of the Line, I haven't quite worked out myself how we're going to break it up into individual crags because it's like such a massive area. So that's part mm -hmm. of getting going with locals here because they'll have a better understanding how best to assess and work with mountain raptors. Um, basically the governance infrastructure. So we incorporated not-for-profit organisation, maybe in bank account insurance. Um, so I'll just mention the board established a um, board member inductions. I've already done that, didn't I? Yeah. Or introductions, I did. Constitution written and ratified with consumer affairs. Um, not on our website, is it, the Constitution? No. Yeah. No, it will get on there. Um, and the rules call for up to six board members plus a steward coordinator, so it's seven positions in there. And I think the um, board members are a three-year term, so, and coming up every two years, so we'll have a, a slow rollover of any members so we don't lose knowledge of the organisation and we have a continuity of how things will be rolling out. So rather than have a whole board elected every year, if you have everyone gone at once, you can have a massive knowledge dump. And unfortunately, that's what happened with Cliff Care when Tracy Skinner left. Everything went with it, and it's like, it's just the bones now, it's a little bit of a hard thing to be working on. Uh, we'll cover that a bit further down in track two, so next slide. Okay, so we all sort of showed you how Victoria's divided up into um, regions are uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven regions, uh, but Mount Iraklis and the Grampians are covered as regions because of the massive amount of rock in those areas. And then we have north, northeast is woods like Buffalo and those areas, and we have northwest which covers Mount Alexander, um, Mount Hope, and a few of those. We have southwest which picks up not many cliffs at all because the Yangs in the Melbourne region. And then we have um, South East, which, you know, Wilson's Promontory and all those sort of areas. So we're looking for those track, rolling out those minor cliffs later down the track. First, we want to get the main climbing areas covered. Um, so we've got documented how we see the organisation working by a detailed operating plan. Now, will that be on the website eventually, Martin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll be able to read the operating plan on the website eventually. Um, right, so the setup of the CRAG assessment process, um, we actually have risk assessments drawn up. Then we also have internal reports after the risk assessments. So if you become a steward, you'll be trained to use these sort of things. Then we have an external report that we send to the relative stakeholders. So if we see something that needs to be done, we send them off. Uh, that's part of, I just covered that one there. Uh, set up training module for Craig Stewards, all that's set up. And yes, uh, once you, if you put your hand up for Stewards, we've trained probably two thirds of the people for the Camel's Hunt area. Camel's Hunt is really good, there's more people than we can pay the stick at for Stewards there. Uh, as we get to the larger areas, it's going to be a little bit more complicated getting people in, but we never know, as it could turn out here, I hope you all put your hands up to be stewards. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a major hassle in your life today to think to do is do a risk assessment because you will actually, once you know how to do risk assessment, you can just do, on your normal climbing day, you'll just walk past the crags that you, and you'll note things that do, take photos, go home at night, pull in the risk assessment. It's not really that time consuming, Martin and I have done a few already. All right, so uh, supporting uh, reconciliation is going to be very important for the organisation and um, sort of as a founding step for that, we've uh, registered a reconciliation action plan with uh, Reconciliation Australia. Uh, yeah, very important. So the um, reconciliation plan has been uh, approved by Reconciliation Australia and it's just a formalised structure to the types of things uh, you need to do to be working in the right direction for genuine reconciliation. Um, you know, as a, as a broad group, we're pretty ignorant. Of, we're coming from a very low base of understanding and not a knowledge of what we needed to do. Um, so this was a really good sort of pointer in terms of the types of things um, that, are, that are required. 
to go in the right direction. So um, they've got the, actually there's four categories that, um, of actions there, um, and there's probably five or six actions under each of those categories about the types of things that you need to do with novel innovation. So they come under um, respect, relationships, opportunities, and governance. Um, yeah, so we're really, we're really proud of that. It, everything in that document is really consistent with the types of things that we thought we needed to do. It just gives us a really good uh, formal structure. And then after a year, we, uh, we report back on how we've done. Um, we can give you examples, examples here of what that involves. Uh, but it's completely consistent with the Craig Stewart's plan, uh, with our plans going forward for the um, better understanding cultural heritage in each of any of the um, any of the climbing areas um, and getting some mutually beneficial um, results from from working together and um, improving our relationships and, uh, and improving our um, satisfaction with, with better understanding etc. Um, one of the one part of that program, uh, and a, a major part of uh, introducing our program, is finding options for cultural training for, for and localized cultural training. There's a lot of generic cultural training around, but our objective is really to get some very to get local training, local cultural training in, in each area. So uh, our Craig stewards have got some. Um, Good background, good local background on um, on cultural heritage. Anyone want to say on cultural uh, that? I think. Yep. Next one. Um, other relationships. So, uh, you know, we've been working hard on trying to set ourselves up with PSPV and getting up them to recognise what we could contribute, and they um, have been pretty positive in terms of what we could contribute. Um, it's still very a difficult organisation to engage with fully, um, and that's taken a lot of time. <laughs> very bureaucratic organisation. They started. Um, we started giving them our operating plan. They liked the look of how the, the our operation was going to work. And they said, "Let's do a, a pilot plan, a pilot program at Camels Hunt." Um, so this pilot program was really to sort out. Um, how to work together. So if we go there and we do our CRAG assessments, we've got this information, we give it to um, PV, how do we then, how do they turn that into actions? You know, because they, um, they can't just let people do whatever they want in park, but they've got to now negotiate with traditional owners or, and consult with traditional owners, uh, as do we. Um, you need all this licensing, um, all these different uh, requirements to actually physically do work uh, are quite complicated. So this was trying to sort some of those things out. Um, Camel Stump has turned out to be a bit of a problem for them because it's um, it, it's not defined by a rack, but by a single rack. It's uh, under contention by three registered Aboriginal parties. So well, initially, when we start, I just say yeah, initially where we started at that point with the. Uh, Mount Massive, and there's basically it was one traditional owner there, but it's fallen under mediation because Mount Massive is important to three traditional owner groups around the area at the same time, hanging rock. So it was just one of those sort of little things where just got, I was going through all the things and working, and I just discovered it was under mediation. So um, I contacted TV, and then they said, Oh, we can't do anything there now. So <laughs> this is how they operate. But now we're looking at Mount Buffalo, which we'll cover again in a bit. But yes. Um, as Mark was saying, PV are very difficult to work with, they're a major machine, all the rangers on the ground are keen to work with us, keen to use volunteers, get things done, but it's the upper management seems to be more of an issue at the moment. We're slowly getting there, but it's just a lot of hard work for me and Mark consistently. Yeah, I'll let you take that over. No worries. Yeah, so we're, we're starting, uh, making contact with traditional owners is, is a key one, and we've sort of made some... Um, some contacts there, that's going to be slow progress. Um, climbing isn't necessarily the biggest priority to the traditional owners across Victoria. Um, there are lots of other things for them to be working on, but uh, you know, we're, 
just committed to make the right introductions um, when we can. So that's in progress. Um, we've been interacting with climbing community representatives along the way. We've sort of um, you know, um, been doing a bit of work with uh, the Greater Gary Wood management plan submissions and following up on those and the peak body discussion. So we're trying to be part of the community as much as possible. Uh, Stephen's done run around Victoria and introduced himself to uh, several of the, the head rangers or some of the key people there and they've been really, they're, they're dying to um, get help. They, they love the idea of volunteers and the structured volunteering program. So um, that's a little bit at odds with the sort of the bureaucratic head, head of PV there. Um, so we're sort of in, in really encouraged by that. I think um, all they need is sort of permission to work with us and they'll, be, they'll jump at the chance. Um, and yeah, we've received a lot of support from a um, broad range of organisations across the farming community, from you know, commercial organisations to other volunteers to clubs, etc. So I think yeah, we've, we've sort of set up a good base. We've really got to put our program into action. That's, where we're, that's why we're here today, <laughs> really get uh, to try and get a, uh, a framework set up around uh, a Rapalese Druidy and um, get going. What have we got next? Organisation building. So, um, yeah, we continue to, in the background, sort of build our, our organisation as well as our program. Um, so we've, it was almost probably 12, 18 months ago when Stephen goes, put the flag out for volunteers and up about 130 people have registered so far, so that was a good support. Um, you know, progress has been slow in the last year, as we've talked about with COVID and various other things, but um, yeah, we're ready to start putting people into gear there. Um, we've done some recruiting for Craig Stewards, as, as uh, Stephen's mentioned, in around Melbourne and got some things going, and it's really good to test those systems. They seem to work you know, pretty well, they seem to be pretty effective. Uh, so we're happy with that. Uh, we're trying to keep in contact with people via newsletters. Um, and we've, you know, key one, a really nice big one, is to get the website up and going. And um, we'll be using that for the communication and, and information as we get down the track as well. So thanks, Goshen, for getting that up in the last few days. Uh, Craig, www.craigstewards.org.au if you want to go have a bit of a look. Um, yeah, that's the starting framework, and we'll, we'll, we'll be building on that. So, uh, Stephen's just going to go through you know, what the actual steps for, for the rap leads from here. Okay, so basically, we already have quite a few people have put their hand up for Mount of Rapids, but we haven't appointed anyone yet. We really want to come out to Manny Mount because it's a town of climbers and have the support of the town and <coughs> have more people standing up. And so we get the right people in the right positions. Um, because like a region steward is a very important role. You will be interacting with PV staff. You will be interacting with traditional owners. So it's, it'll be alongside with me helping in those areas. Because I'm basically I'm based in Kite in central Victoria. Um, three hours from Mini Craig basically, which is good except for Wilson's Promontory. Um, so I can get around quite easily when needs be, and I've done that already a few times this year. So. So as I was saying a bit earlier, help establish and make appropriate <coughs> stewardship structure for the region. It's just, um, it's, I, I find it interesting because it, you can really assess a lot of the areas quite easily at Mount Arapalis, but the points where the main erosion points are, I'm not going to be aware of those. I don't climb here enough to know all the major issues. I know the obvious ones, but there's a lot more popping up. Um, the Scotch thistles, for example, hopefully we'll get them cleared this year. It's up to PV if they you know, follow through. They meant to last year and they didn't. Uh, but so basically, you know, once we get the regional stewards sorted out for the area, preferably someone with 20 years experience, really good knowledge of the area, and supported by the community. They're kind of it won't work without the community support behind those people. Um, so, so I already said, yeah, we're interacting with the TOs. 
Yeah, so support the Dear Craig Stewart team um, by reviewing and mentoring their work and authorities. But initially, I like the ideas of Friends of Rapalies. It's a good stewardship name to have. Um, Louise Shepherd was sort of supporting us. I'm a bit just, you know, it's not here tonight, so I can't go. So we don't know, do we set up a new um, stewardship body of the Rapalies or we, you know, somehow get that working really well and have people under it and keep it going. It's been doing stuff for a long time, but on a very small scale. So uh, once we get that and start reviewing and mentoring their work and authorise publications to the website. So the authorisations of publications websites will still go through myself and Martin. We will basically Craig students will be taking ownership of the reports rather than individuals. So it takes the pressure off any particular individuals. Um, so for this position description from me, so email me, most of you probably be able to get my email address pretty easily now. Where um, are you looking? Yeah, but I don't remember it. <laughs> um, it was a pretty simple one. Uh, we'll set up the grampings. We'll come back to that a bit later. It's, um, we'll just go to the next slide and we'll come back to that one. Uh, okay, so we're just talking about point of Craig Stewart's complete training. So the annual Craig assessment, that's basically the risk assessment. So you'll do that. But yeah, at times you might notice something that's actually deteriorated greatly. So you'll do another risk assessment on that and send a report to us and then we'll... Um, continue on from there to um, follow up and chase PD so we can get works done. Uh, so assist to activate improvements, that's our uh, once works have done, promote sustainable farming practices and respect for cultural heritage in the area. So that's the standard that most of us climbers that have been climbing a long time do already. So basically um, the whole, you know, Craig Stewards are literally people doing what they're saying they've been doing that's just formalised and that we're just looking after the sites we love visiting and look after the culture and the rock. Um, I'd like to just touch on the part of um, assist to activate improvements. So basically Parks Victoria now have what they call Parks Connect. So anyone that wants to volunteer in those parks must register on the Park Connect page. And on top of that now they have just introduced working with children's checks. So no volunteer works can go on any park without the participants having a working with children's check. So you can, basically it rolls out, it eliminates rolling up on the day and signing up. Even if you have a working with children's check, if I can't check it on the phone or the steward can't check it, we're going to have to refuse it. And if we don't, then we're liable if something happens to a child on this particular project. So it's a big impost, but it's not hard to get workings with children's tech. It takes a bit of time. There are some areas that will knock some people out, unfortunately, and I think that's a real shame. Uh, I don't know what the ones are that you can't do, but that's the newest change in PB, and it has made volunteers across the state working in parks all have the same problem now. So, and it won't get reversed because it was brought in by the Labor government in 2013 initially I think it was rolled out and it's rolling out to all organisations across the state. PB has just adopted it and I think down the track it will be even organisations like our own will be expected to do the same. So I, I, I will be asking all our volunteers and stewards to be doing the work on the children check anyway. That way we're ahead of the game if it's needed in the future. And it, well, we're going to have to have it to work on many projects anyway. So. That's one of the biggest changes in, you know, so you know, a lot of the works that have been done just quickly by the call out for people to help and all that can just no longer be rolled out. In theory, theoretically, we're not allowed to even dig a hole, move something without a cultural heritage check. So, um, assessment. So it's really holding up PV as well as giving how they do things now. So, yeah, that's probably the biggest hurdle to um, a volunteer organisation for volunteers, but fortunately we're a stewardship program and we're assessing Chris, Chris and doing reports and we're sending them to PD and they have to act on anything, it's not safe. 
So I did one recently for Watchtower and Grampians, sent it off to them because I don't know if anyone's been to Watchtower and the Grampians lately. The star pickers sticking out of the ground, they had to act. Once they get a report, they must act. They cannot sidestep it because if something happens to that point, they're liable big time. Uh, so we'll just move on a little bit. Uh, what do we need? Oh, okay, yes. It's, uh, people who are approachable, calm, team orientated, patient. Rules me out on a lot of those things some days. <laughs> so it's more of a matter of learning how to um, have your temperament when you're addressing people and doing really dumb things or not wanting to listen and they know better. You've got to keep your calm. It's not as easy as it sounds sometimes. So, yeah. Um, people who embrace our coach to reconciliation and support our Raptors. As Martin was saying, the Raptors are very important to us. It was one of the major things I wanted from the start of the organisation is to have this sort of thing set up. Because if we're not working with traditional owners, we're not going to get anywhere. And all climbers say we respect cultural heritage, we respect. So we have to show it to do it. We have to be able to connect. And we're not going to be able to connect without taking these steps. Um, and support and, embr yeah. Su support and embrace diversity. So that's part of what you know, all organisations are wanting to do anyway. So, oh, so we can pop on to the next slide. I'm hoping I'm almost finished. <laughs> actually, you, you. So other regions, yeah, actually. I mean, expanding this. after Rapalese, we'll continue to expand the program across Victoria. Um, probably the next one, the next, next main focus is the Grampians because that's got a lot of work to do and it's a good, good to get started there. It's going to be the most complicated. It's good to maybe put that off and see exactly what's going to come out of the new management plan. Um, we want to click back two slides as we, as we, we um, that's it. Um, but yeah, so getting through this first stage in Rapalli is the next, we'll be doing very similar sort of thing in, in the Grampians. Uh, getting Craig Stewart in place, trained and, and active there. Um, you know, there's probably a, a bit more involvement, we hope, through that sort of lobbying around the management plan. We're hoping that it's an advisory group of some sort gets set up so that climbers are going to uh, a, a constant form of input into the, how the management plan is activated. That's sort of what we're all hanging out for, and that's what email campaigns have been organised for, Mike. <laughs> anyway, very doing as much as we can to influence um, having climber input into um, really probably having a, a, a program like ours either formalised or um, well supported by the traditional owners in Parks Victoria within the Grampians. Um, but we're, we're sort of powerless on, on that for the moment. Um, but the other thing is, that in speaking with the park rangers, they're saying, well, you know, no matter what you do, um, let, let's, you've got to work a year in advance um, in terms of getting stuff done in the Grampian, so you can, they've got a good process of getting projects in on this Park Connect system that they use for coordinating volunteer work, and over the next six months we can, we can start flagging some things, like improving facilities, at, uh, improving erosion control at the uh, Watchtower and things like that, we can get them programmed into next year's um, next year's volunteer work. So there's a bit we can do in the rampings in, in the meantime, if independent of the management plan. So go two slides forwards again. <laughs> and we're back to other regions. So yeah, we're moving our PV supported program to Buffalo. Um, we're going to build on relationships with Jodo Warren. We've just got some really positive vibes from them and I think we can get some get some good work done. We just got invited um, they recognise us as a stakeholder for what is Melville Caves, a small climbing area on the other side of Bendigo to, to Alec. And they're doing some works there, engaging with stakeholders, and they recognise us as one of the stakeholders, which is really, really good. You know, it's a nice, nice little step forwards for us. Uh, so we'll get some input into, into how, uh, those, that, those plans. 
Um, and we've got a lot, lot of work to do on developing training and education programs. And um, uh, other people are doing training and education programs across the state as well. So, being, uh, uh, you know, so we don't want to overlap with those. We want to be supportive of those. Um, Gwern and um, the QTs have done some really, really good work. And um, yeah, we try and try and fit in with all of that and make the message consistent. Uh, whatever they've done has it sounded very consistent with the type of thing that we want to do as well. So uh, there's plenty of um, opportunity for really strong collabor collaboration across the climbing community. Uh, we're not just trying to do our own thing and, uh, at all. Um, and we do need to expand our board. We've got uh, we have a lot of work on, and it's really coming down to a very few people. So, um, yeah, we at the moment we've got two positions free. So anybody who's interested is welcome welcome to put their hand up and sort of apply. Uh, we we are very well represented by stewards at the moment. So there's sort of four stewards here. Um, we've got room for a bit of diversity in a number of in a number of roles, ex expertise as well as um, social diversity. Uh, so we, we really probably need to do some concentrating in, in work on fundraising, so grants, sponsorships, donations and merchandise, that's, that sort of thing. Uh, we, we need some people who've got an interest, not even necessarily experience, but interest in doing that. Uh, but it's a real focal area of work for us over the next, uh, from, from here on. Uh, and communications is really important and we just need some more, more support on that. Um, education and training, any expertise in that area would be would be really handy, um, and of course, you know, sort of a expertise in reconciliation and diversity is, is going to be important as well. Um, so yeah, we'd like to have a, a slightly more diverse board than um, middle-aged white males, and uh, <laughs> so we really welcome anybody who's who's who'd like to you know, get involved. Um, at that sort of level, no obligation. You can uh, you can get involved at the Craig Stewart level. is 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 perfectly good. But if you've got any of those skills and you think you might want to get involved, yeah, let us let us know. You don't need to be a board member to fill these roles. We could actually make the roles outside of the board position. Uh, so, like, if anyone has those skills and they want to help us, we desperately need them. Yeah, be good to hear from you. You should have been here early enough to see us trying to work out this. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't the case of being here, I think we were there. Enough. So yes, yeah, so, yeah, we really need a lot of help. So if people think they can help in any small way, just get in touch. There's, um, there's so much we've got to do, and it's, it is mind-boggling how much work Martin and I have been doing, just in the normal stuff for doing and then negotiation building a website behind the scenes. Um, it took us a good period of time to get the constitution written. Uh, it was a lot of hard work that we got past that and there was just so much to roll out. And in reality I will spend almost a day a week of my work life on this plus evenings. It just it just gets heavy. Once PB's involved there's just so much to go on. Martin and I are constantly having meetings with PB. And, you know, I think PB are doing this with all stakeholders, so it's a lot of meetings, and then that's why everything's so slow. And it's just gets tiring. So fortunately, Martin and I bounce off each other, and we can handle things if need be. But if there's people who can help and help take the load off, we definitely appreciate it. Um, I think I think that's probably where we're finishing. We're probably hoping. Just check in case we've got one more surprise slide. Yeah, so <laughs> well, we've got frequent, frequently, frequently asked questions. So this is where we, I guess, we open it up. I mean, these are the things that are commonly, uh, commonly <coughs> asked. But <coughs> jump in at any stage now, and yeah. So with these questions, a lot of people have asked why we need a new organisation. Well, basically, I was touched on that earlier. We need autonomy. We need to have control of what we're doing. And there's no other actual organisation in climbing that has a. Um, board structure where the periods that each member is for three years and then they roll, the voting rolls over. It's, you know, there's no continuity in any other clubs and 
Yeah, if you had dropped the, a lot of people thought we should have put the, you know, stewardship program under ACAB or DCC, or, but they are, they are subject to major changes of direction, and we didn't want, I didn't want, I shouldn't say anyone else, it was my decision to say I didn't want a club that just come and rolled over and changed and met um, leaders telling me to change the direction of Craig Stewart's Victoria. Craig Stewart's has really been set up for climbers to look after climbers, and that's who we're supporting. And we hadn't, didn't touch this earlier anywhere in it, but if you become a Craig Stewart in any of the levels, you become a voting member of Craig Stewart's Victoria. We do not have paid membership. If you're just a volunteer, you just become a member. So basically the people who are, the members are the people who are doing the work. They get to decide the direction of CSD, not someone just paid their money to join. So if we've got 130 registered stewards, they are the people who are voting and deciding how our Craig Stewards will be run. And uh, we will be listening to our uh, Craig Stewards and how they can think things should go or what needs to be done and we'll discuss it and we'll work on those. So, it's just very important that the structure is about this program and nothing else. Yeah, so um, basically that's why we need another organisation rather than dropping under someone else. How does Cliff Care fit in? I'd rather get Kevin up here to do that. But um, no, Cliff Care is... You want it, Kevin? Not sure. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Um, Turn the mic and step back. Um, Cliff Care is still going to be Cliff Care and doing the sort of things Cliff Care has always done. Cliff Care, for those that don't know, is I suppose it's uh, a child of the at arm's length from Victorian Climbing Club. And one of the mem members of the board will always be, you know, it's ex officio, whoever happens to be the president happens to be on the board. So there is still that relationship. Um, how is that different from what Craig Stewart's um, presenting or, or, or offering? Um, Cliffcare's got a great legacy, particularly over the last 20 years, doing a whole lot of things. But if there are some sort of criticisms, maybe too strong a word, but if there are some sort of things that differentiate it from what Craig Stewart's about, um, Cliffcare is seen as a child of the VCC, rightly or wrongly. Um, I think, without putting words in uh, Stephen's mouth, he wanted an organisation that was seen to be agnostic when it came to any one club. Like, it can be open to people who are in VCC or in ACAD or in Western Victorian Climbing Club who are in various uni clubs or who are not inclined to be in any club whatsoever. That's fine too. Also, Cliffcare had a paid um, member for doing a fair bit of work, which was great, but one of the past treasurers I remember repeatedly pulling his hair out saying, you know, this is, this is costing us a fortune and it's, you know, we're a small club, rah, rah, rah. Um, Stephen's idea, I think, was more about utilising volunteers, and we've seen lots of examples overseas where lots of um, locally based volunteers are coordinated uh, at a state or a national level, depending on the country you're talking about, uh, are doing it that way. We're getting heaps of work done with volunteers rather than having one person having to do most of the work and then being paid by a small organisation that struggles to pay the money. Um, so it's seen as open to a, a, water, a broader group. Also, Cliff Care, again, probably because of a lot of laid on the shoulders of a person, which is pretty a, a solid job, uh, was probably focused mainly at the Rapleys and to a certain extent at the Grampians, but there's the whole rest of the state. And so I think Stephen was very conscious to try to make it very statewide with groups of people from, you know, there's a group that I know you were dealing with at Mount Beauty, for example, or um, oh, yes, Gorgeous no. Craig at Mount Beauty, yeah, like the other end of the state. For example, um, you know, people who frequent places like um, Man Alexander and Black Hill in the centre of Victoria, as well as what's happening in Western Victoria and Buffalo and everywhere else. So, um, Cliff Care will still be Cliff Care. It will do whatever the um, current, you know, the board happens to decide are their priorities from time to time. Cliff Care also has charitable status, so it can actually, you know, raise money by people contributing and then being able to make that tax deductible. Um, so we may even, or Cliffcare may even decide to support particular initiatives of CSV, but CSV would be a broader umbrella group that is a bit more um, truly statewide, truly open everyone, not just a particular club, but in a nutshell. Yeah. So on top of that, basically Craig Street Victoria is handling operational operations <coughs> at the moment, so I'm basically also acting as the Cliffcare 
access liaison officer. So I'm talking on behalf of PIV here with PV as well. So PV are having a lot of trouble realising that basically thanks to this Victoria's the people they need to talk to and um, get their stuff done. Um, We'll still be running out quite a few volunteer projects under Cliff Care. There'll be quite a lot under, and if um, the VCC see that they want to do a project through Cliff Care, they ask me, and I've got to put it up in Park Connect, and I've got to try and get it through. So, and we're happy to do that. It's no use having two organisations trying to do the same thing. Um, in the in the sense that if, uh, as I said, if they want us to do something in particular, that's no drama, we're already set up to do it. So basically handballing Cliff Care's projects to us in the sense that we'll set it all up, but it'll still be under the Cliff Care name and it'll be organised through Cliff Care. There'll be joint projects as well and then we will have some of our projects that are the CSV projects alone as well. So it was probably um, one of the biggest things was, yeah, as Kevin said, the pro uh, the impost on one person, even though it was paid, was a lot. And you know, it's just it's actually really hard work. You know, especially if you see some problems, you can either talk to the people and explain to them all that, or you can report back to the regional steward or Craig steward and let them know what's happening. So the only thing we do expect of general stewards is that they let us know they're out and about through the steward duties and where and what they saw. So it's just the same sort of thing, but there's no added impost to having to do risk assessments and those sort of things. And yeah, it's just another way of climbers being able to step up and help and look at things and get action on things and know they're supported by an organisation. So, um, okay, we already covered why not employ a paid access officer. For one, it's too dear and it costs a lot of money to employ someone full time. And really, it does need to be a full time job. And climbers can't raise that much money, in, well, possibly could to employ someone to do it, but it would be a major impost. When there's plenty of people willing to put their hand up and volunteer at their own local favourite crag and do the work. Um, other questions? Yeah, any other questions? Yes? Yeah, so I'm just trying to figure your relevance to, say, out here, talk about a rap list, forget about the rap list, yep. single RAP. What has been your dialogue with that single RAP up to date? Well, let Martin take that one. <laughs> uh, they, they haven't responded to our approaches so far. That's going to be a long. That's going to be a long uh, story. Yeah, uh, it's going to, that, that really is going to take time. I mean, we're new on the block. So I'm struggling to find what what, what your relevance is going to be. If you can't get over that hurdle. Oh, we'll get over that hurdle. We'll, we'll get over it. We'll get over it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So with the that's reconciliation... That's what we've got to rely on doing. Yeah. As part of a reconciliation action plan, we believe we're the only climbing organisation <coughs> in this state, possibly even greater, to have a ramp in place. So we don't even, we're not aware of even Gwern having one yet. But the other thing is with Gwern, we've had a meeting with them. We're on a similar page list, but <coughs> They're talking with the reps. We'll be able to eventually engage and go down the tracks as well. Um, but at the moment, well, yeah. so yeah, but a, a, a good example of that is that uh, you know a lot of these things do actually happen with personal connections rather than uh, um, organisation connections. You know, uh, sending a, a letter of introduction around to a, a traditional owner has minimal impact, but if there's somebody within that traditional owner group who's got a connection with the organisation, it really helps. Gwern have actually been really quite helpful in a way. I mean, I don't know that they, you know, they would officially say they're supporting us, but um, they invited us on the walking country uh, for the reconciliation week, and we were introduced to John Clark from Eastern Mar, and that, you know, those little steps really help. Yeah, so we've met John, we can then we can recontact him and say, hey, how about uh, we have a bit of a more in depth talk about Craig Stewart Victoria and how and how you guys might want to interact with us. Yeah, in the well, my question was only not 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 over there with the shame. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, shame yeah fair enough. With three RAPs, yeah, yeah. yeah. but here specifically, and we're in Nanaimo, 
Yep. yep. No, I'm telling you we can't that. guarantee anything, but that's one of the, uh, you know, you've got to work on it hard and slowly. Well, <laughs> be patient. You yeah. say that you can't, just, you can't just throw up a hands in the air and go, well, we'll set up Craig Stewart's for Black Hill and Cattle's Hunt and Holy Will Craig, or we'll just forget about our reference. Yeah. It can look after itself. But the relevance is yeah, the fact that we're a stewardship program. We're yeah, assessing, right. we're you know, doing risk assessments in all the areas, we're reporting erosion, we're monitoring. We're doing stuff that no other organised, even PV can't keep up with it. Um, so basically, eventually, we, we'll just be bombarding them with reports. So one way or the other, actions will get done, even if it's not through volunteers from the climbing community doing the work, because they have to act you know, if there's major issues. But with somewhere like here, climbers have looked after it for so long and it is in really good condition in general. Um, so it's one of those sort of things that's engaging with BDLC, it'll get there, it'll be slow, but it has been a slow <coughs> process for a long way and I think Gwern did have personal context and that's one of the major reasons they were mm. able to get that established. And you've got to face it, Climbers have been really negative towards them. Um, the no harm stickers have been taken quite offensively by them. That was probably sent us back quite a bit of distance. And now, okay, I understand climbers are hurting, but sticking a no harm sticker on a BGL sign is not a good practice. So, um, and I have had that come back to us. It really has put it put us back a long way. You know, they're just seeing it as if we're trying to take away, you know, their rights yet again. Well, it'd be pretty short sighted to think that you now one person does 200 kilometres an hour on the highway, yeah. but everyone Oh, that's right, person. but, Come on. yeah. So you've got to be, remember how things happened, at, you know, when other organisations were operating and doing some silly things and saying some silly things as well. Um, it all has impact. And in reality, they don't have to talk with us. They don't have to engage with us at all if they don't wish. So we can only hope that we can get there and work with them. So it I seems to me it's a bit of blue sky here. Well, it's yeah. a, it's a, I guess we've got to start start somewhere. So mm. we can uh, start, I guess the whole program is all around so looking at our impact on the, on the environment, on the climbing environment. And that's number number one. Once you, once we've sort of demonstrated that we understand that impact, um, then we can start to talk about to people about how that is managed, um, one way or another. Um, you know, uh, when will when can that actually happen here? You, you all all we can go back to is saying that we're going to try, and yes, that's blue sky. You, you're, I mean, you're right. Surely. There's no, I can't commit today. <laughs> Surely, like once we get maybe a few runs on the board and can demonstrate some outcomes that, yes. you know, yep. those types of things will help with time. And it's, um, yeah, important to just kind of have that blue sky maybe as a starting point and then yep. sort of hopefully move into it. And I mean, if, it, if we don't get there, then we haven't lost anything from demonstrating some positive That's outcomes correct. on our yeah. Yep. It is hard work. There's no question about it, and and there is some there is some hope there. You know, I think we're you know across Victoria we're going to see some areas are going to be much harder to work in than others. Um, yeah, I, know, I guess we're probably starting behind the eight ball here, you know, to some extent. But I, I don't know. I think uh, well, I mean, again, speaking with word, I think they. There's been a lot of a lot of turnaround in this impress of, of their understanding of uh, of climbers and climbing climbing, and so I think that that point has turned, um, and I think there's an opening there for us for the climbing community to start at different levels, other than other than Gwern. But you know, if, if Gwern was doing the communication and we're and we're doing the action, that, that's not a problem either. That's all, that's all a good. You know, um, collaboration and and um, just getting the same same thing done. <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt that Gwern's got a good uh, a good communication uh, and relationship there. No no harm in us using that uh, to to get the, to the same result. Any other questions?
questions? Practically, are you a volunteer organisation so you can get your working with children for free? Yes, correct. Yes, so you can uh, have that. Yeah, when you register, I'll, I'll, I'll put you through that, but basically when you do um, get your working with children to check you, you've got a list um, PV as the organisation you're working okay. for, because you, as I said, you have to be under Park Connect, but we will yeah. ask, also ask you to put us down as well. Yeah. But once you, you know, register, register with us, we'll know, and you know, we'll send out the information that you need to do and go from there. So um, I'm just doing a put for our next newsletter what's required and then it will also go into the next Argus as well. So the information will be out there shortly anyway. So. You made it sound hard before, but anyone who's got to work with children would know it's actually really quick and easy. Oh, it is. <laughs> but really yeah, some people think it's a major impost. It's not. I've got mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. awesome. Well, there, it's, it's reality <laughs> for any volunteer organisation, the CFA included. And if you want to just do it off your own bat online or just tick half the boxes and whip into the post office or whatever, it's, it's not that hard. Yeah, and I think a lot of people probably already have them. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. Yeah, any more questions? I probably speak briefly. I've actually said it to you personally, yes. Um, the biggest thing I can say from coming from or having been in the Grampians last week with, with John Clark, is that there are some positives in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the best thing I'm going to echo from that is that there's some very positive conversations happening. We've done some bloody amazing work with the, with the traditional land groups up here, the local mob. Um, and they understand where we're coming from. Uh, obviously, there was, been a, there was a big kickback a few years ago that put us in a big impulse. Um, but the conversations there are happening and they're, they're very positive in that space and I think there's some uh, big thanks to for that. Um, but all I can say in that space is just need to keep having those conversations and just having respectful conversations about what is in the grand field, what's there, and uh, what we need to be aware of. Uh, and that can go a long way to the future uh, and having a solid future uh, in that place. But they understand 100% uh, where parts have put us in the situation parts have put us in uh, and the, the light that we've been put in unfortunately. Yeah, we've got no more questions. I think we have any more slides or no? No. Thank you. Well, final quick question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you mentioned before risk assessments. Are they risk assessments or crowding assessments? Mm. Same thing really. Um, you, you're assessing the crowd for its risks. And what's Does the the PV yeah. want a risk assessment or can we just call them? Oh, no, no, we don't send them the risk assessment. No. We send them a report if some action is being taken. Yeah, it is. And he does want to change the website. It's cultural and, and environmental impacts is what we're looking at. Yeah. We're not looking at safety. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We should change the name because the risk assessment is particular. We do actually call it crag assessment. Yeah. 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 Parks call the environmental risk assessments here. Yeah. We sell them in house. Yeah. yeah, that's right, because there are risks to the environment. Yeah. That's right. They're, they're, all that terminology gets mixed around. Uh, I mean, we've got examples of, of those and you'll, you'll see them soon enough. But um, yeah, you go through and typical uh, sort of four categories of impact that uh, typically climate will have will be erosion issues, will be uh, weed issues, which are not necessarily directly related to climate. Um, you know, there's impacts of things like chalk, um, and then there's cultural heritage impact, and uh, well, there's also, there's also a big advantage Cornwall risk assessments, ironically, in the government environment, um, <laughs> is that, as Stephen mentioned earlier, as any government organisation, if you identify a risk, something therefore has to be done about it, which is a big, big advantage in anything you put towards a government organisation. Yeah. You can't say, okay, that track, the potential somebody trips over that footpath, um, councils are finding this a bit more, more in Melbourne. Somebody might call over that, if you mention that, or you put that in a report. They have to action, they have to do it. And it bites you in the arse in their governance procedures down the track if that's not action. So, in some but ways, yeah. 
they are, they are actually very structured exactly the mm -hmm. same, where you're, you're identifying what the issue is, you think of how you can mitigate that you know, by, taking, by taking action. Either, either you fix it or you put some preventative action around it, you put a fence around it or, or something. You know, it's, a, it's basically the same, exactly the same process for the assessment. Um, the terminology probably doesn't matter too much, but uh, those are the things that we might learn as we go. Exactly what we call it, is it might be important for different people. Is there a danger of closing things? A, a, a danger of closing things? If, if you put a risk assessment. Well, I, we have five levels yeah. of risk assessment, yeah. and I'm very cautious to ever use the fifth one, <laughs> which is close the site until it can be removed. Yeah. So, even for a watchtower, which should be closed because it is quite dangerous in the sense of you know, loose boulders, stakes sticking up, I've done level four immediate action required. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we can edit that, yes. <laughs> no. uh, but, you know, that's, I mean, uh, in theory, it's, it may well be completely appropriate to close something. Yeah. You know, the, so that's why it's there. You know? yeah. And most people can work around it. So, I think you've answered my question. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think yeah, if, if you mentioned that there's a level 5 that may, might be to, to close the site, essentially, um, it might be needed sometimes. Uh, yeah, so that's why we have. I understand you're trying to take the, the, the climbers' interest, but also trying to do it in an intelligent way, right? And, you know, make it you know, last yeah. forever. Um, we've got to be, we've got to be, go there, we've got to be genuine about it. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, there's other, it, would, it just undermines our credibility if we say, oh, that's all right to use. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll keep using it. <laughs> you can probably say that what you've done at Mount Macedon and the communications there is a good example. You know, with all those trees down. Yes. I'm just from the periphery, that's an instance where it was yeah, right. necessary to stay closure, and there's no question around that. Yeah. When it happens. No, that was last year. No, no, it was close. The roads are close. Big, big roads are close for roads. We don't want to instigate closures. No, that's no. yes. yep. A good example might be a perfect example highlight the issue that mushroom rock in the cathedral is where there's a boulder at the top of the grave, for example, that is the size of that stream and that's sitting over the top of the cliff, and at some stage it's going to fall off. <laughs> that grave might not be no longer applicable. I'm amazed the locals haven't been out there yet. Hmm? I'm amazed the locals haven't been out there yet. Shh. I just want to ask a question down the back. Yeah. I was just wondering with the risk assessments, was that including fixed protection when you're doing a risk oh, assessment yeah. of the bag? This is where we stop the recording. We will acknowledge, we will take reports of bolts um, and issues like that, but we don't know exactly how to do it. At this stage, it will probably just go back down the pipeline, how it always has, goes to the people who have been doing it. Fixing, fixing the bolts. Okay. Uh, we can't take ownership of that at this stage. We just don't know how to even approach it. PV don't know how to approach it. So, but yeah, I think, we, I think the climbing community knows how to approach it. Yes. Uh, I, I guess you know within the climbing community, we, we can't take. Um, you know, we're we're, we're going to focus on environmental and cultural impacts. Um, you know, not not own the whole not own the whole space. Well, that's <laughs> said. That's, did paint all the bolts at Camel's Hump last year. Yeah, so yeah. that wasn't so much a safety thing, but just a visual visual thing. So we'll take ownership for that sort of uh, environmental impact through visual contamination or whatever you call it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, where bolts should be, whether they need replacing, you know, that, that sort of stuff is a, is a very much a broader climbing community thing that other, other people and smaller groups of you know, experts and um, <laughs> Etc. Can can do. It's not our, our particular. The, the safety side of things is not, not particularly our expertise. Yes. So any more questions? Holly, do you want to explain your artwork? Yeah. Okay. So <coughs> the colours of the dots represent like the colours that are around here.
it. It was great. I mean, it's, it's on our wrap, and it's a, and it's a really lovely little capture of, uh, of what we're trying to do and where we are, and yeah, really awesome.